I'd like to call the 17th regular meeting of the 2016-2017 Common Council to order. Will the clerk please read the quote for the day. Thank you, Mayor. No matter what job you have in life, your success will be determined 5% by your academic credentials, 15% by your professional experiences, and 80% by your communication skills. Tonight we have a special guest, Eagle Scout Brandon Thimiller, is from Troop 801, which is affiliated with Grace Episcopal Church, is here with us to lead us in the pledge. His Eagle project was to beautify, restore, and uh, aid in the maintenance of the grounds at the Sharon Richardson Hospice. He, restored, he and his group restored uh, three and stained three trellises, planted flowering vines, installed paving stones around each of the trellises, and cleaned and refurbished 100 plus pieces of teak uh, wood furniture that were in the grounds. So Brandon, please come forward and please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Brandon. Next, we'll go on to approval of the minutes from our... our, our did you get the roll call? Are we good? Uh, the roll call, we have 14 present. Okay, and the uh, alder person, Jose uh, Holshu and uh, Donahue are all excused. Next, we'll move on to the minutes from our last meeting. Alder person, Wolf. Make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for the motion and support. Is there any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, there are no resignation or mayor's appointments tonight, but under confirmation of mayor's appointments, city attorney? Yes, uh, from the mayor submitting the following appointments for your con confirmation to the Sheboygan Squared Bid Board. Uh, Rick Scroggins, Amy Horst, Jane Davis Wood, Eileen Simmons, William Holbrook, Paul Rudnick, Chad Palaszczuk, and Sarah Spicer, all for terms expiring 12-31-18. Alder Prison Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, make a motion to confirm. Second. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Those are before us. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to a presentation of City Hall Alternatives by Chad Pelichek, the Director of Planning and Development. In the past, we've talked about staying in City Hall or possibly building a new City Hall, and there's a new alternative that uh, hasn't been presented to the public before. And uh, thank you to Chad for putting his, this PowerPoint together and presenting this option. Thank you, Mayor. As soon as you guys all get these. So you can go to the next slide, Sue. So why we you can go to the next slide? <coughs> so what we wanted to do today is talk about uh, seven potential options for the common <coughs> council to consider on what to do with City Hall. Um, the first option uh, is to renovate City Hall for the original price. So the 11.2 million is what Bray Architects had come in with at the first stage of this uh, project. Um, at that time, there was a recommendation to set a budget. And the option number two, which is the 8.5 million, came to fruition. So the option two is a revised uh, option of option number one. Um, so those are the two options that are currently stand as to renovate uh, City Hall with the original option and the revised option. Option number three is the new option that this would be to purchase the Wisconsin Bank and Trust property, which I'll talk about shortly. Option number four is to build a new building on the North 10th and Wisconsin Avenue parcel. Option five is to build a new building on the parking lot west of Mead Public Library. Option six is to build a new building on the parking lot on South 9th Street. And the last option is to build a new building on a parking lot east of the Pennsylvania Avenue pub on Pennsylvania Avenue. So if you go to the next slide, option number one, as you recall, this was a complete renovation of City Hall. 
Um, this added that glass enclosure and a number of major updates to the building on the north side of the property for 11 point, roughly 11.2 million. Next slide. So under this option, this option completely reconstructs the basement, the first, second, third, and fourth floors. It adds a new glass lob lobby entrance on the north side of the building, uh, adds new stairwells and elevator, completely relocates and updates the restrooms, includes a new front driveway entrance to service the building. Um, and one last thing, the option has minimal costs in there, and we'll talk shortly about that, on relocation during uh, construction and how that would work, but we'll get into that in a sh little bit of detail shortly. Next slide. So option number two was the 8464 This is the revised option that the, um, they asked the, the committee strategic fiscal planning asked to come back with a revised option. They set the budget about $8 million. Bray Architects at the time uh, went back to the drawing board and looked at what could be done to do a project within that uh, scope of service of about the $8 million to $8.3 million. <coughs> so if you go to the next slide, this project involves renovation of only the first, second, and third floors. It does not include the basement and doesn't include anything on the fourth floor. Um, it would add new stair towers on the north side of the building as well as a new elevator. However, under this plan, the elevator does not go to the fourth floor and will not service the fourth floor. The plan does uh, not include renovating the basement and the fourth floors, and it also has uh, minimal costs in there for uh, relocation of the city operations during construction. Go to the next. So the next slide is the new option. This is option number three, which is to purchase three properties of uh, three parcels of property <coughs> owned by Wisconsin Bank and Trust for seven million nine hundred and eleven thousand. So as you can see on the map, the uh, parcels that would be included in this purchase would be the purchase of the existing building and the parking lot to the west of the building and the parking lot to the north of the building. So it would include all the parcels Wisconsin Bank of Trust owns except for the historic properties that they own in the buildings on the corner of 8th and New York, um, where like the New York on 8th Cafe used to be. If you go to the next slide. This is just showing that from the air, so you can see the build, the current Wisconsin Bank and Trust building and the entire parking lots. This would be the parcel that we would purchase. Under this plan, this plan fulfills two identified needs. The first need is to relocate City Hall, um, if that ch option is chosen, to build new. And the second one is to build a downtown parking structure that would also provide some additional parking in the downtown as well as infill uh, development opportunities in the future. Next slide. So how would this work? Under the plan, uh, the tentative agreement with Wisconsin Bank and Trust, the bank would occupy the first floor and city hall operations, uh, a city de department would operate also on the first floor. So it would be a shared space. The first floor of the building would, would be uh, condoed out and it would include the Wisconsin Bank and Trust portion of about 4,000 square feet and then the remaining first floor would be a uh, city hall operations which would be a lo uh, probably an entrance, a lobby and some city department that could be the first point of contact. That would oc occupy about 2,600 square feet. <clears throat> Then city operations would operate under the second, third, and possibly the fourth floor of the building. The new parking structure um, would be located to the west of the building and it would uh, provide some parking for businesses that we've heard of that are interested in expanding downtown but have uh, expressed concerns about future parking needs. It would also provide us with infill development opportunities of five adjacent parking lots that are currently um, surface lots and underutilized to some extent. It's also a central location for the parking structure and it's within walking distance of most of the daytime users. So if we go to the next slide, this is an artist rendering of what that building would look like. The building in blue with the first floor being green and the logo on the top would be the new City Hall shared building with Wisconsin Bank and Trust. So the green portion, the first floor of this would be the shared uh, Wisconsin Bank and Trust operations as well as city operations and then the upper uh, three floors would be city hall operations. You can also see the uh, parking structure to the west of the building that would be between the new building and the current city hall. 
Um, that would allow for up to three floors, uh, maybe more if needed, but three floors of additional parking in the downtown. So if you go to the next slide. This is the proposed first floor floor plan, and that's why I gave you copies of this. I know it's difficult to see, but what I want to sh point out is you can see on the A Street side of this, there is uh, the building outlined, and the bank would take the northern portion uh, under this plan of about 4,000 square feet, the city hall would take the southern portion. There would be a shared uh, staircase and elevator. Um, on the southeast corner of the building, you can see there are some arrows pointing there. That would be the entrance to the city hall operations, as well as an entrance from the parking structure. Um, the bank building would be serviced off of A Street as it currently is today. Under this plan, the parking structure would have two aisles for operations for the bank in the first floor, so the, um, the ATM machine and the drive through window uh, would still be serviced as it is today, just be on the first floor of the parking structure. Then there would be 30 stalls on the rest of the structure uh, on that first floor with a number of handicapped accessibility stalls, and that would service both the bank and the city hall operations people that would be parking in these stalls then would enter on the entrance to the west, um, enter into that southern, kind of the southwest entrance where that arrow is, and then come either in to the first floor and, and talk with whoever is, whatever department is there, probably the city clerk's office, or go up to the upper floors for service of other departments. If you go to the next slide, this is the proposed second uh, second story floor plan, so the city hall would occupy that entire floor plan of about 7,600 gross square feet. Um, there's 44 parking stalls in this floor with the up and down ramps um, as shown. Next slide. Is that it? Is that it? Third and fourth? Yep. I can't see. Okay. So this is the third and fourth floors. This would be the same as the second floor. Um, there would be uh, except more parking, 52 stalls on these on these floors, and the same would be uh, City Hall floors three through four. There would be about 7,600 square feet of space. Next slide. So under this plan, the city is currently obtaining consultants to commission a parking study to confirm the location and the size of the parking. So that should the size of the parking garage. Uh, this information will be available mid to late January. So under the previous floor plans, it's about 184 parking stalls um, on that, in those floors. Um, the parking study and the results of that uh, recommendation by the consultant will determine if that's sufficient or if there would need to be additional um, stalls considered and there could be another deck put on the top of it. Um, as I stated before, the entrance to City Hall would occur on the southeast corner of the proposed building. The total square foot of the new building would be around 25,400 square feet. Uh, each floor is approximately 7,600 gross feet. So under the plan, the revised plan that Bray put together, the renovation of the first, second, and third <coughs> floors of this building um, are about 25,368 square feet. So this is very... Um, it's very comparable and similar in size to what was planned under the revised uh, plan with the Bray Architects. The building could be developed with a fifth floor for future options, operations, or it could be designed to allow for additional floor to be added in the future. So this is another option that could be considered if we are worried about future expansion and expansion of the city hall and the next city hall operations in the next, you know, 30 years or so, we could design this building such similar to the library construction where at the library a fourth floor could be added. This could be a fifth floor or we could bid it out to see what the price would be to build it as is needed now and not necessarily utilize it until a later date. And the school district has done some of this stuff with their previous building additions where they build it now and then they occupy it at a later time. Um, this also allows the city hall operations to stay in the current building until the new building is complete with no relocation costs. So the real issue that is yet to be determined and there's been a lot of discussion about is where does city hall operations go for a year when this building is being construction, construct, reconstructed. 
there's the been talk about staying in the building and trying to do half of the building and keeping operations here while that happens. There was talk about moving out and going into some other locations, other city owned buildings. We've had internal discussion about that. Um, you know, I think other than building out the garage at public works and maybe a little bit at engineering, there's not a lot of available space to go in. So the relocation costs could range from anywhere from a hundred thousand to five hundred thousand dollars. And that's based on if we have to go out and find office space and lease office space. If if we were going to look at a downtown office building um, to lease office space, uh, the average rate of office space downtown is about thirteen dollars a square foot. We might be able to negotiate something down to maybe ten dollars a square foot, but for our square footage needs it's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a month in rent to rent and we still have to set it up for a whole year for operations with IT and phone and the operations that we use here out of City Hall moving the server all of that kind of stuff for one year so it could get very costly if we can't find an operation uh, a place to go within is existing biz buildings as well as even if we do stay in existing buildings and we go into some of the city hall, other, other city operation buildings, we still have to deal with the technology needs and trying to get that um, set up in the different locations. So the range is roughly between 100,000 and 500,000 and that may be on the low end. If you go to the next slide. <clears throat> so what we did is we looked at the downtown parking structure at the Wisconsin Bank and Trust site and said, what would it look like if we did a 500 foot buffer around this property? So the, the orange or red um, bubble on here shows what a block and a half walking distance would be. And the block and a half walking distance came from talking to a couple of the major employers in the downtown that have expressed interest in expanding and how far they would allow their uh, employees to walk on under second and third shift operations in the winter. That's about 500 feet. So when you look at uh, siting this at the Wisconsin Bank and Trust site, you can see that it includes the northern part of it is the library, um, the eastern part of it is 7th Street up to about the Art Center, um, and then down to Penn Avenue and uh, west. It includes the post office, which has had numerous parking needs for a while as well as the redevelopment of the Social Security building that's currently empty at 606 North 9th Street or directly west of City Hall. Um, they are potentially putting that building up at an auction and, and so there will probably be some uh, redevelopment happening at that site. So when you look at this, um, this is the 500 foot buffer. You can see the spots where there's uh, potentially infill development that could occur and bring in additional tax base by centralizing the parking and getting it into a structure and redeveloping in those lots. Um, one property that's not shown on this map is the property directly north of the Wisconsin Bank and Trust building. So as part of the uh, purchase of the bank building um, and the demolition for the new building, it would open up an opportunity for development on that parking lot between the current Wisconsin Bank building and the building on the corner of 8th and New York, um, of which we've had some discussion with potential development inquiries related to that. So, next slide. I know this is difficult to read, but this really lays out the costs as we see options one through seven. Um, today, so option one is the original renovation project, and that was a prop project that was about 11.1 uh, million. If you add around 250,000 for temporary relocation, you're looking at about 11.3 million. <coughs> option number two is the revised renovation plan of City Hall, um, that was estimated with the relocation of about 250,000 at about 8.6 million. Um, option three. Uh, the difference with option three is it brings in some opportunities to gain some revenues. So under the plan, the sale of excess land, which would be parcels, the parcel to the north of the Wisconsin Bank and Trust, um, the assumption was made that that could maybe be sold for $125,000. Uh, the sale of the land under the uh, parking structure to the parking utility is around 100000 And the sale of City Hall, because we'll be in a new building and this can become uh, potentially market rate housing is about 300,000. So the revenues generated from that is about 525,000. If we compare that to the construction of the new project um, at about 8.4 million, the net 
project cost estimate is about $7.98 million. Um, one other note is the leverage annual property taxes line that's shown on here at about 620000 includes the parcels that could be redeveloped and put on the tax roll that are currently parking lots um, and some assumptions on what those development costs may be. So the 620000 is the upper end of what could be generated in additional property taxes under that option. Option number four, the 10th in Wisconsin site. Um, there would be a revenue of the sale of City Hall at $300,000. There would be uh, the construction at about $8.3 million, and the, the really the two uh, numbers here is unknowns are the environmental remediation at $500,000. We had a development um, planned for that about three years ago, and the, the remediation at that time was $1.1 million. That was under residential housing. Um, there had, we'd have to have some dialogue with the DNR to see if uh, the cost for environmental remediation would be less given the fact that this is a government commercial building and there's not the same requirements as there is for residential. However, we put a number of 500000 in there. We also put a number of 250000 uh, added to the renovation construction budget because the original um, plan that Bray did did not include a parking lot. Um, and we estimated that at about 250000 So all in, uh, with that project and the revenues expenses is about $8 million. It would generate around 259000 in taxes, and that would be based on City Hall coming onto the tax rolls as a redeveloped adaptive reuse building. Um, the Mead Public Library option is the same thing. It's $7,054,000 um, in net project expense with the same of about 260000 in taxes. Option 6, the 9th Street parking lot, um, that is the uh, parking lot we'll sh I'll show you shortly south of, uh, on South 9th Street on the Swing Street. That project has a net project cost of about $7 million. And then building the new city hall between the, former, the current Jimmy John's Strip Center and the Pennsylvania Avenue Pub building um, would be a project cost of about $6.9 million. So if you go to the next slide, this is, an, this is kind of a bubble diagram of what the Bray Architects had put together. This is the North 10th Street and Wisconsin Avenue project at $8 million. Uh, and this at one time had proposed a location for a future fire station, um, if that decision was ever made that a new station was made. But it would occupy um, an administration building that would be three stories, as well as a public area that would serve the public in the the model that Bray Architects was trying to get to where you kind of segregated out the public from normal administration operations and then have a parking lot to the north. Go to the next slide. This one would be the parking lot west of the Mead Public Library. So this would be basically continuing this kind of lining up around the fountain, if you will. Um, the building would sit on the north. Uh, east northwest corner of the property. It would have a public area in the front, administration in the back. It would be two stories. Um, the challenge under this option is that if uh, this one moves forward, the, there's going to be very limited parking at the library, and we're really going to have to look at a parking structure or some sort of parking uh, maximizing at that property to make up the loss of the stalls that are going to be taken as part of the development. So we would, a parking structure would have to be considered at that location as well. Option number six is the parking lot north of South 9th Street. So this is the one-way street going um, south if you came from uh, right over here at Pennsylvania and 9th. Um, this is kind of an awkward, this is a city-owned parking lot and it was considered because it's city-owned, but it's kind of an awkward operation because the front entrance would be only on a one-way street um, and it would really primarily be served by the alleys that go through the parking lot um, and it really doesn't give any kind of real feel for the front of the building and where the front of the area is so that there, there's some challenges with that but the administration building would be three stories the um, public area would be one story and then it would use the existing parking lot that's to the north between the um, multi-tenant strip center where Jimmy John's is in the Penn Avenue pub. <coughs> Next slide. Under this plan, so this would be putting a building into the area 
that I just talked about, the parking lot right off of Pennsylvania Avenue between the Penn Avenue uh, pub and the Jimmy John's building, for lack of better words. This uh, would be a one-story public area, two-story administration area. This building poses some challenges too. There's not a lot of room to work with in this area. Um, parking close by is very limited. Um, it would utilize the parking lot where the previous option had been laid out as the main parking and you know, be serviced. It would, it would have some visibility on Penn Avenue. Uh, Pennsylvania Avenue is part of the plan, but it's really as in the building uses committee squished in here and probably makes more sense for a commercial development than it does for a governmental development. So that was a comment that came out of building use. This is the last and final option that's on the table as part of um, the seven options. So if you go to the next slide. Questions. If you've got questions. Uh, before we start questions, I'd just like to let you know that I reviewed the operational rules that you approved at the beginning of the year, and I found that I've been much too liberal in allowing people to speak to a question. Those rules called for you to address the chair twice and ask two questions under uh, one item. So tonight we're going to start doing that, so I just wanted to give you a little heads up. and. Uh, when the council turns over, if that's working okay, you can approve those rules that way or you could change them and allow for, for more questions per alder person. So with that, anyone have any questions? Before you go to questions, Mr. Mayor, I just want to say that later on the agenda there's a document, an RO from the uh, city administrator and myself that's being referred to the building use committee that outlines these options in more detail. Um, and that will be the document that can go to the committees. The, the thought at uh, the discussion last week at building use was that this document would come in and they would um, come out with either a recommendation or some pros and cons and send it back to the Common Council and then it could be referred to the committee the whole if the council so chose um, before the final decision is made. So there's been interest in public dialogue on this. This presentation will be available on the city's website uh, tomorrow morning for the public to see as well. Thank you, Chad. City Administrator. Uh, Chad, just for clarification, you identified uh, a dollar amount of $13 a square foot. Uh, with the amount of square f uh, feet that the city is considering, that $13 is an annualized rate. Uh, not a monthly rate, so it's roughly $330,000 a year. Okay. The city would incur lease costs. Okay. Thank you. Okay, seeing no questions, we'll move on. Thank you very much, Chad. Thank you. Now, is there any public forum this evening? Under mayor's announcements, a couple of items I'd like to remind the public of. Number one, winter overnight parking rules are in effect and we want to remind people to park for tomorrow. So whatever uh, the day is, even or odd, that'll guide which side of the street you park on. And then we have a few uh, holiday uh, things. Uh, the Shoreline Metro is running their Jingle Bus Tour of the Lights, so that will leave the um, the drop-off area here in front of City Hall every uh, night between one bus will leave at 6, the next will leave at 7, and those are going to be available every Thursday and, and Tuesday uh, till Christmas. And you're also asked to bring a, a, a food item along uh, when you go through the lights display at the uh, Rotary Lights Project. And making spirits bright is also available and getting great uh, uh, Interest by the public. Um, one night I've heard they've had over a thousand cars that have gone through, so uh, that's looking very good. And that again is going to be every night from five o'clock to nine o'clock. They will be closed December 24th and they will end on uh, New Year's Eve. And then we also have uh, the city holiday lights display at the water feature next to the Mead Library. And when you uh, view that, if you want to tune into 87.7 FM, you can listen to the music that's in sync with the lights. Okay, next we'll go on to the consent agenda. That'll include items 2.3 through, through 2.17. Alder Person Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I'd request to pull 2.11 for a separate vote. Okay. Um, we'll uh, take care of that division of the question then first. 
Uh, item 2.11 is an RC by Finance, who has referred resolution number 128 of 1617 by Alderman Person Wolf, authorizing the appropriate city official to enter into an intergovernmental cooperative agreement with Sheboygan County for the sales tax revenue sharing for transportation infrastructure and maintenance, and recommends that the resolution be passed. I need a motion to approve. Alder Person Donahue. Thank you, uh, Mayor. I would move to uh, uh, pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alder Person Wolf, are you going to speak to that? Alder Person Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is the agreement that, um, that's that been uh, handed down to us from the county, um, imposing their will on us, saying that uh, we have to abide by their rules in order for us to get our meager $412,000 as part of the, the county sales tax that they um, passed and imposed upon the residents of the city. Um, and again, 49% of the county population resides in the city. The county's gonna generate roughly $10 million from this. Basically half of that or more is gonna be generated from businesses or residents from the city, yet we're only getting $412,000 from this. We've got 200 miles of our own streets and roads that have the most heavily traveled volume within the county. And again, with the wisdom of the county administrator and uh, the county board supervisors, we're only getting $412,000. So I would just like to voice my disgust with this agreement and the equalized value calculation that has nothing to do with sales tax revenue generation and how they came up with this figure and uh, implore the or request the mayor and the city administrator to continue dialogue with the, the, the county administrator and see if he will eventually see the light and find out in his uh, and find it in his heart to see that um, the condition of the city um, does reflect on the county in the streets and the roads and it would be in their best interest to have something that would be more beneficial and positive towards the city See now, the majority of the revenue is coming out of the city. It's a gross redistribution of tax dollars, and uh, it's completely, you know, it, it's it, it's unfair to the residents of the city who are bearing the burden of this. So thank you. And I'm sorry. And with that, reluctantly, I'm going to vote in favor of it because if we don't pass it, we don't get anything. And um, you know, it, it is what it is. But I just want to. Uh, go on the record and voice my disgust and displeasure with it. Hopefully that we can um, get it amended in some fashion so it's more equitable to the residents of the city. Thank you. Alder Person Donahue. Uh, and I just want to um, emphasize what uh, Alder Bellinger just said, that if we don't vote in favor of this, I assume we will not get the money. So it would be in our best interest at this point for everyone to cast an eye vote. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on uh, 2.12, or 2.11 rather. <clears throat> so I just lost my screen, I vote aye. Um, and Scott, I don't have you either. I'll vote aye. Thirteen ayes, one no, and one abstention. Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to the remainder of the consent agenda. 2.2 through 2.7 minus 2.11. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. With that omission, I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on other items on the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll?
Scott. Fourteen ayes, one no. Motion passes. The next move on to reports of officers. Items 3.1 through 3.3 .3 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, 4.1 is a resolution by Alderperson Donahue, Bellinger, Thiel, and Wolf authorizing changes in the committee structure effective April of 2017 and April of 2018. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I move to uh, put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eyes. Motion passes. Item 4.2 is a resolution by Alderperson Wolf authorizing entering into an agreement with advanced disposal related to tipping costs for contaminated fill from the Portscape apartment project. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to suspend. Second. Thank you for that motion to suspend. Is there any objections to suspension? Would you please explain why, Alderperson Wolf? Uh, yes. Uh, I would like to ask Chad to come up and explain. Thank you. When we negotiated the agreement with uh, South Pier Sheboygan LLC, the developer of the apartments that are under construction on South Pier, we were under the assumption that the entire South Pier District was properly capped as part of an environmental remediation site. Um, that was not the case when they dug into the area between Fisherman's Row and Illinois Avenue, this long strip. There was no cap in that area. We've done an extensive research to understand what happened 17 years ago of why that maybe hadn't been capped, and we haven't come up with any real um, decisions. So in meetings with <coughs> Attorney Adams and myself and the city administrator, it was decided that these are costs that the city is probably responsible for uh, in the fact that the uh, developer was under the assumption that there was properly a clay cap in that area and they wouldn't have any environmental fill to deal with. When they started scraping the piles off and found this fill, they immediately contacted us and provided us with information on what they believe the cost to be. So this really is um, allowing they need this work to happen this week um, because they, otherwise construction is going to stop on the half completed uh, row of 20 unit properties. This under the next document would be a TIF eligible expense under TIF 6. Um, we're assuming the price, the cost to be about 75000 We negotiated a deal with the advanced disposal um, landfill to use it as daily cover. Um, at $33 a ton versus waste management's estimate of about $60 a ton. So uh, we've got the best deal we can. Um, and to keep construction moving forward, we're asking for a suspension of the rules of both this document and the transfer of appropriations, with the, which is the next document. Thank you very much. With that, uh, is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed with a motion. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderperson Bellinger. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, maybe, Chad, if you want to come back up here, I just have a question as to what the extent of the rest of the properties on South Pier that are uncapped for future development. Are we going to run into this <coughs> again, or do we know what we're working with or, or what, what's limited, what's capped and what's not? If you could just explain that, thank so you. So they started on construction on the first group of buildings was on the 1.72 acre parcel, which is the parcel to the north of this. They ran into a little bit of contamination, not a ton. Um, that and it really was when they dug underneath the cap. So that area was properly capped. When we've developed all along the river, that area was property, properly capped. They have done soil borings on the other two parcels, phase two of next year. So our, it's our assumption at this stage that that area should be properly capped. We're not sure why this area wasn't, but it, 
at, when we developed this in 2000, Pantera was standing, and if there was some thought at that time that maybe this area would never develop, and that's why that wasn't done. I don't know. I, I, we can't find any information. We even went to a previous public works director to ask him, ask him what he thought, and there was he didn't really have any recollection. But going forward, we believe that the other properties will not have a problem. Do I ask follow up? Go ahead. Do we have any legal recourse to go after whoever did the original work? To potentially we do. The problem is we have to determine what the problem is and, and who we would go after. Uh, and at this point, we don't have sufficient information to even do that. There's nobody to sue. Now, I'm, we can continue to investigate, and if something, you know, if we have additional information and it turns out that there's a contractor who um, didn't properly cap it, uh, didn't follow the contract, um, potentially we could take action uh, uh, because it's a newly discovered matter. Is that what's going to be the direction it's going to take, that we're going to continue to look into it? I guess I would hope we would. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't speak to that because I don't know the answer to that. Um, I know that there are some real, there are going to be some real difficulties proving, you know, if, if, we, we, if we are able to find somebody, there, there may be some difficulties in proof. At this point, we have no evidence that we can link it to anybody in particular, in fact, if, you know, and unless we can determine that there was somebody who actually acted negligently or didn't follow the contract, there's not much we can do. That doesn't mean the story's over, but. And that will I'm be not determined optimistic. and looked into? That'll be determined and looked into as far as I'm aware. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Twelve eyes, three no's. Motion passes. Item 4.3 is a resolution by Alderperson Wolf authorizing a transfer of appropriation in the 2016 budget to establish appropriation for environmental re remediation costs related to the Portscape apartment project. Alderperson Wolf. Well, thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to suspend. Is there, any, is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen eyes, two noes. Motion passes. Items 4.4 through 4.9 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, 5.1 is an RC by law and licensing to whom was referred RO number 140 of 1617 by the city clerk submitting various license applications. Recommends the denying the, be the beverage operator's license number 1525 based upon her failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on her application, her record of violations related to the licensed activity, and her record as a repeat law offender and her failure to cooperate with the committee. All the person Don, go ahead. No. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we wanted to ask if uh, Shante N. Harris is here tonight by chance. No. We did ask uh, Ms. Harris to join us twice. We gave her two opportunities and we did not uh, receive commitment back from her. So as a committee, we'd like to move that the report uh, be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. That's before us. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 will be referred to the Committee of the Whole. Under ordinances, 6.1 will be referred to public protection and safety. 
Next, we'll move on to other matters. City Attorney. 7.1 is an RO by the City Administrator and the Director of Planning and Development submitting a summary of options regarding renovating the current City Hall or constructing a new City Hall. That will be referred to the Building Use Committee. 7.2 is a resolution by Alderperson Wolf uh, determining a maximum bid on a property auction for 606 North 9th Street. That will be referred to the Finance Committee. 7.3 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2017, June 30, 2017, and June 30, 2018. That would be referred to the Lawn Licensing Committee. Next, we'll move on to adjournments. Alder Person Donahue. I move to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time tonight. Wow.